Lil Zan was recently on the No Jumper podcast and Adam22 asked him a few questions about Lil Zan's like sobriety, his addiction, going to rehab and everything like that. And Lil Zan made some excuses about why he relapses. And that's something that we definitely need to talk about. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community or pop culture and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So before we get started, full disclaimer, I don't know Lil Xan. I know, I know, it's a shocker, but I do not know Lil Xan. But I am a recovering drug addict and alcoholic in recovery. I worked at an addiction treatment center for a little over three years. And although I'm not a licensed therapist or psychologist, I have a lot of experience with addiction because of my almost 10 year addiction and my almost seven years of sobriety, all right? So my hope is that anybody watching this, if you know somebody who is in active addiction or in early recovery, or if you're somebody in active addiction or in early recovery, I really hope that looking at this situation with Lil Xan can help you out. Now, some of you might be wondering, Chris, why are you watching an interview with Adam22 and Lil Xan? Funny story, so I was watching some H3 podcast uh, clips and one of them was like Lil Xan has a little IQ and it was something about like the boyfriend tag with his like girlfriend or ex-girlfriend, I don't know who it is. And Ace 3 was, uh, Ethan was like poking fun at Lil Xan. I'm just like, dude, this guy is like messed up. I think Ethan even mentioned that a few times. But I remember like, I don't listen to Lil Xan's music and I really hope if anybody watching this is not a fan of Lil Xan's music, like try to like separate the person from the, the art, you know, the artist from the art. like. Lil Xan is somebody who struggles with a drug addiction and I hope there's some empathy in this. And when I say empathy, I have empathy. I, I just also have some tough love. But anyways, after watching that H3 clip, um, it, YouTube recommended the, the No Jumper podcast because Lil Xan was just on it. And I saw in the title that they talk about his sobriety. And yeah, basically in the interview, Lil Xan like, he, he skirts around the question a few times, which I'll touch on in a second. But then he says like, it's the industry, right? The industry is what does this. And Lil Xan was high during it. Like he just like smoked a blunt, like at the very beginning of the episode. But he, he referenced Lil Peep and X, right? Um, and Lil Peep died of an overdose. X got murdered. So I'm not sure why he like kind of like intertwined those two because there were two very different circumstances. Like maybe like Lil Peep and Mac Miller or something like that. But anyways, yeah, let's talk about this. So the first thing is like, Lil Xan like skirted around the question, all right? And this is something that a lot of drug addicts who relapse do, right? Like we don't wanna talk about it. Like, and, and here's the thing, I definitely do have empathy. I am somebody who relapsed many times before getting sober this last time, almost seven years ago. Like we skirt around this stuff and the reason is, is because of the guilt and shame that comes along with it. Like, especially somebody like Lil Xan who made it very public that he had a drug problem and he was going to rehab and everything. Like me, I'm not even on that level and almost, Jeez, this was probably nine years ago um, when I went into a detox center just to, you know, like get medically stable for a few days. Like I posted on like Facebook, just letting everybody know, hey, I have a drug problem, I'm getting help. And then when I relapsed a few months later, I felt so guilty and ashamed about it. I let myself down, I let my son down, I let my, you know, son's mother down, I let my friends down, I let my family down. And I felt awful about that. So that might be one of the reasons why he skirted around it or maybe why somebody in your life is skirting around it. And another reason I wanted to make this video is because again, I'm not like a Lil Xan fan, but I remember when Lil Peep passed away, like I was doing research for a video I made about Lil Peep when he passed away and I saw Lil Xan talking about how like drugs are like killing so many people like at such a young age and he was gonna get his act together. And I didn't really follow up on that story, but here we are today. And Lil Xan, obviously his name comes from Xanax, you know what I'm saying? And that is a very dangerous drug. Not only can you die from it when you mix it with other things, like just something as simple as alcohol, like if you're drinking and taking Xanax, you can die from it, but Tons of people in the United States are dying like Lil Peep did because Xanax is now getting pressed or like fake Xanax is getting pressed with fentanyl, which is more potent than heroin, 
okay? So anyways, getting back to it, like Lil Xan, when asked about his sobriety, he talks about how the industry and the work that goes into it, this is what's creating addicts. And like, here's the thing, like, cut that crap out like cut it out like these are excuses like you guys like i said like i i love everybody but i'm gonna give tough love especially when it comes to addiction like when i was working in the treatment center i cannot tell you the amount of dumb excuses i heard for people relapsing everything from my mom or my wife or my husband like you know got into an argument with me to somebody saying, well, they offered me drugs. What was I gonna do? You say no. <laughs> In my seven years being sober, I've been offered drugs and alcohol so many times I can't even count. I've been offered my drug of choice, which was prescription opioids by doctors, and I've still turned it down. I used to tell my clients all the time, I was like, you are never going to find a valid excuse with me about why you relapse. So when I see Lil Xan saying it's the industry, it's the career that he's in, and how much work they do that is leading to addiction, that is such BS, all right? Because here's the thing, let's look at people like Eminem, right, who just celebrated um, like over a decade sober, I can't remember, I think it was like 11 years sober. Let's look at Macklemore. Although Macklemore had a, um, a relapse, you know, a couple years ago, he is again in sobriety you know there are many many other artists in the mainstream who are sober so like when when i hear Lil zan saying that like if i knew Lil zan i'd be like no man that's not an excuse because something that all of us have to learn in sobriety is if that person can do it i can do it too you know what i mean like i remember when i got sober i heard about people having their children die i met a guy who had a terminal uh terminal cancer and he only had months to live and he stayed sober through it so when i hear somebody like lil xan say i go to work a lot like that is not a valid excuse what what we have to do is we have to find people who are doing what we want to achieve and this is for everybody drug addicts non-drug addicts whoever it is like we need to find mentors we we have to find people who are in a place that we want to achieve and learn how to model their footsteps. What are they doing, right? Like for example, Eminem, when he celebrated his birthday a week or two ago, he showed his 12 step coin, right? So I would imagine, and this is, it's, it's totally possible that Eminem just goes to a meeting once a year and gets his coin. I've seen some people do that, but it, it's also possible that he goes to 12 step meetings regularly and that's how he's staying sober. Macklemore, the other rapper that I gave an example of, he has many songs about 12 step programs, all right? Like when he, um, I believe it's his song, Other Side, and then also his song, um, Starting Over. That song too, it's about a relapse and then going back into 12 step rooms. So to see somebody like Lil Xan say like, oh, the industry, this is why I'm a drug addict, that is just an excuse. But here's the other thing, and the last thing I'm gonna touch on um, is the fact that like any, like so many people who get sober, they think they can still smoke weed, right? Now, let me make it very clear. I am not anti-weed. I'm not anti-alcohol. I happen to have an addiction problem, right? So when I have smoked weed in the past, it always led me back to my drug, drug of choice. Like I am somebody who cannot smoke weed safely without going back to my drug of choice. And I've seen this take so many recovering addicts out, so many addicts out, so many people who get sober from like heroin, opioids, meth, cocaine, all these things, they, they get rid of the hard drug and they're like, okay, I can still smoke some pot. And much like myself, it leads them right back to that drug. Like again, I'm pro weed, I, I, I'm very, you know, um, knowledgeable about like the medical benefits. I know it helps with anxiety and depression and everything like that. I actually voted to help uh, the law get passed to uh, get it legalized here in the state of Nevada, right? So I'm not anti-weed. So get that right the hell out of your head. But the reality is, is when you see somebody like Lil Xan, who's talking about relapses, he's still smoking pot. You see what I mean? And I would be curious if he's ever tried to stop smoking pot and see if that helps with his sobriety. And if that's somebody out there, if that's you, if you keep finding yourself relapsing and you keep smoking pot, maybe try getting rid of the pot for a while. Because for me, I always had a foot in the door. I always had a foot left in the door that left me wide open to relapse. My last relapse that happened seven years ago was because I kept smoking pot. And then when, um, 
prescription opioids were offered to me, I was like, eh, might as well. And then it took me on a year and a half long relapse that almost killed me. Because the thing is that we have to understand about addiction, whether it's alcohol addiction, drug addiction, food addiction, sex addiction, shopping addiction, gambling addiction, whatever it is, we are doing it for one of three reasons, to get a feeling, to get rid of a feeling, or to have an escape, all right? The root cause of addiction at its core is that we are trying to alter our state of mind because we can't handle living in the reality that we're currently living in. We're trying to get rid of something. We're trying to avoid something. We're trying to suppress something and shove it down. So when we're actively doing something like continuing to smoke pot, we're just finding a different unhealthy coping skill. You see what I mean? And this is why rehab is so important, therapy is so important, 12 step meetings are so important so you can get down to those root causes and figure out what's really going on so i do hope for the best for little zan but again i don't think little zan's gonna see this video i hope this video helped you or somebody you know please share it with somebody you know if you see that they're in the same kind of cycle as little zan all right but anyways that's all i got for this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and a huge huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on patreon you're all amazing and if you would like to become a patron get involved in our monthly q a some other perks and benefits help support what i'm doing here click or tap right there on that patreon icon all right thanks so so much for watching i'll see you next time